So welcome to today's episode of Shark Bites. What we are going to look at today is a really fascinating story that popped up on my news feed because I Google everything about sharks on the planet. And this one was about a hundred year old juvenile Greenland shark that washed up off the coast of England, off the UK. Now what makes this so amazing is the fact that a hundred year old animal can still be sexually immature. And this is the case with this shark. And what makes it really, really cool is also the Greenland shark. I don't know if you have followed shark stories over the past few years, but a couple years ago, scientists aged Greenland sharks as being able to live almost up to 500 years old. So in that context, it's really not surprising that these scientists found a Greenland shark that was over 100 years old, yet still a juvenile, sexually immature. That means a 100-year-old shark still cannot get into the nightclub, which uh, I think is fascinating. So what I'm going to delve in today is a little bit of information about the story, what the scientists found, but also how do we place this into the context of sharks? How do we understand what this means in relationship to the ecology, the biology of the Greenland shark? Well, the first thing you have to know is the habitat of the Greenland shark. They occur at the northern hemisphere, but right up top in the freezing cold frigid waters. Now, most sharks are ectotherms, and by ectotherms I mean cold blooded. Their body temperature matches the temperature of the surrounding water. Now, there are the mackerel sharks, grey whites, Mako sharks, um, salmon sharks, what else? Poor beagle shark and the two makos. So there's five or so sharks that are considered endothermic, warm-blooded. But the Greenland shark is not one of them. Yet it still occupies, it still goes way up there in the cold waters. Now, the problem with this is that when you're operating at a really cold temperature and you're an ectotherm, you really can't perform that well. You're slow moving, you're very sluggish. You have to adapt your entire way of life to fit into this environment and, and your physiology reflects that. So how these Greenland sharks get around this is that they grow firstly, very, very slow. They have this incredibly slow metabolism. The documentation of them swimming shows that they have probably the lowest tail beat frequency of any fish, which is fish, bony fish and sharks of any fish species on the planet. They go about their lives in this sluggish, slow motion type thing. And that's what also allows them to reach these incredible ages. The fact that they can reach 500 years old is because they have such a slow metabolism, they take so long to grow, they take so long to reach sexual maturity. How then, the question is, does a shark that is so lethargic, so slow, actually go about catching prey, because they're not vegetarian, but how do they go about catching prey to support this type of lifestyle? You know, it's not like they're going to be great white sharks doing these high speed breaches on seals or, you know, like the, the, the salmon sharks or the poor beagles chasing these salmons up upstream and leaping out of the water in these incredible displays. This is not the Greenland shark. One of the strategies they use is they're essentially really deep water noses that sniff out detrital rain. That is carcasses, dead animals, bit polar bears found in their stomach, reindeers found in their stomach, fish, seals that have died fall in their stomach, floating down to the depths. 
these sharks can smell them out really, really good and essentially like vacuum cleaners, going up and cleaning the ocean down at these incredibly cold, slow depths, scavenging and feeding off these carcasses. Obviously, if they are scavengers, it's about finding that carcass quickly through smell, but not requiring to have that high speed sort of dynamic interaction that we're so used to seeing in sharks. They can be these slow, huge, lumbrous creatures. Another strategy, and, and, and when I'm talking about these strategies, you must remember very few of these sharks have ever been observed alive. You get some deep sea ROV footage, maybe a bruv footage, but the observations can be pretty much counted on one hand. Sometimes they do come up to the surface, but most of their life is invisible to us as humans and also to scientists. So a lot of it is speculation. And there is speculation that another way that these sharks can hunt down and capture prey that they need to support themselves is through targeting prey that is asleep. And this is similar and, and suggested in other sort of sleeper shark, these other big, uh, big slow moving sharks as well, in which they wait for prey, be it a seal, be it something else like that, to be asleep, come up, bite it. And, and the evidence for this is sort of inference based on the fact that you find whole animals, whole carcasses in these sharks that do appear not to have been scavenged upon. So really cool strategies. Again, the door is wide open for scientists to do more work and actually get a type of footage to confirm what they're speculating here but really cool strategies that allow this shark to survive and capitalize in a really demanding, tough environment, that being in the Arctic, deep down in these cold, frigid waters. So how do we know the age of this shark? Well, this particular shark that came up, she was around four meters in length, and the estimation for over 100 meters isn't in fact based on anything from that carcass other than the fact that she was four meters and thus as a four meter shark scientists fitted her into the sort of general growth rate of these Greenland sharks and worked out that she was over a hundred years how do you know she's sexually mature well that's really cool with males you can look at their claspers that's their sex organs you can actually look at them and see whether they're calcified they become a lot harder stiffer when they reach sexual maturity, you can't bend them. If it's sexually immature, you get their claspers, they're a lot smaller, they're flexible, they won't be able to go inside a female during copulation. This shark, however, was a female. How do you know that? It's sexually immature. Well, one of the cool things that scientists do when they dissect these types of carcasses is look at the uterus, look at all the tubes, and you can actually see whether by the by the width of these tubes, the uterus, the, the oviducts, whether the female is in fact mature or sexually immature. And you see there's a very big growth rate between a sexually immature, really thin tubes, they become really fat, wide, once that shark reaches maturity or once that shark has also had offspring of her own. So going inside the female, very clearly that she was in fact an immature shark probably over 100 years in age. Now, the really cool research actually happened about two or three years ago. This was when the scientists discovered and had a chance to analyze carcasses of some really big Greenland sharks. And what they did that was so unique was they worked out that this shark was laying down in the vertebrae column was like like rings of a tree was laying down various rings what they suspected was every year problem was they didn't know whether these rings were getting laid every one year every two years every three years but what was the tipping point what was the key discovery was the fact that 
you could look at radio isotopes, the level of radiation in these individual rings. And they could go back to the Second World War with Hiroshima and actually detect those radioactive imprints that the shark picked up. And from that, they worked out that this shark was laying rings once a year. Thus, they knew Hiroshima was around 65 years before that. They could work out that was in fact 65 years. This is how many rings were put down. Thus, this shark is putting down one ring a year. And then they can extrapolate all the way back and say, wow, we've got a 250 year old shark here. So really incredible research, really thinking out of the box. And I think really fascinating. So as scientists slowly learn more about these Greenland sharks, you have this incredibly long lived, slow growing sluggish species that has evolved a really cool way to fit in with an extreme environment. This is the cold, frigid waters of the Arctic. And despite being able to not perform like a great white shark, it has been incredibly successful. They are continuing to live on this earth, they're prospering, they are surviving, and they are now the record oldest vertebrate to live on the planet today. And I think that's really cool. So there you go, a little bit more about sharks, and I hope you enjoyed today's episode of Shark Bites. Oh, it's supposed to